Good day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here. The other day I was walking on one of the interior quote roads unquote ha ha on the endangered species sanctuary and I encountered this greasy old worn weathered bit of rubber and I immediately knew what was going on because I did recall uh, only a couple of trips ago pulling out a stick which had been stuck underneath the vehicle and at the time I couldn't find any damage that the stick might possibly have done but I was worried about the rubber boots that cover the constant velocity joints. There is one such rubber booty at the end of each axle, one at each corner of these old Subarus and the constant velocity joint itself last time I had one replaced cost $276 for the parts and about another $100 for the labor, $150. Bucks. So the $350, $400 exercise, if in fact this thing was registered and it could go on the road to get to town to go to the mechanic. So that's the downside. The upside is the vehicle has probably done less than a kilometre since it, it tore this booty off. So there's probably not a lot of dirt actually inside the constant velocity joint. What is in there is probably not stones. It'll be organic matter like wood or leaves or grass, perhaps. Now this is extra good because what normally happens is you damage your booty and then you keep driving on your dusty, dirty roads and dusty, dirty gets inside to the greasy bits. And the first thing you know, and it's generally the front ones that go, is when you've got the wheel in that position and you're trying to go around the corner, instead of driving around the corner straight and smooth, the vehicle makes a snick, 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 snick noise. What that means is the dust and the dirt and the grit has already got inside of it. The CV joint is cactus and you're up for that amount of money in a trip to the mechanic. Somebody who knows what they're doing. So, before driving it again today, and I did have a job that I wanted to do involving this vehicle. Before driving it, I have pulled off the back wheel. And I have had a bit of a look. And I have confirmed the diagnosis which is the boot has been ripped off, but it's still more or less aligned. Isn't that great? Isn't it lovely? And you know, these, these have actually got another one in there. So there's actually six of these bloody things. Fairly vulnerable points, so they are, on the bottom of your Subaru. If you were a really cursory person, you might try using just Gorilla Tape. I don't think Gorilla Tape on its own is going to be any kind of a satisfactory repair, even though this is going to be a very low distance travelled vehicle because it lives inside this 100 acre endangered species sanctuary and it doesn't ever go out there onto the open road. Still, duct tape ain't going to cut the mustard. Might be some duct tape, in, tape involved in the repair, but duct tape's not going to be the primary material. I was thinking of using some old inner tube material from an oldie fashioned type of a rubber tyre before they went all tubulous. But I couldn't find it, so I've obviously thrown that away in the last clean up and therefore now I wish I hadn't thrown it away. Which is why I tend not to throw things away. So looking around, I actually found something rather better. To wit, the amputated calf part of an old gum boot, which doesn't fit me. And the offspring that I brought it home for no longer lives here and has their own gum boots and this thing come from the dump anyway it just looked like too good to leave there so I brought it home and nobody's using it so it's no great loss to throw away the bit that I'm not going to use to fix my car if it works. First point I'll make is that you notice how dirty and dusty this is if you look close you can see there's still a little bit of water here drying out because this thing has actually had a wash to get rid of all that dust so that when the predicted and projected Gorilla Tape gets used it's got a chance of sticking to the rubber instead of sticking to the dust. You'll note that this is not actually a flat square rectangle, it's a segment out of a cone. 
I consider that's a goodness because that end is going to be larger in diameter than the fixture and the fastening at that end. So therefore having a pre-fabricated conical patch is not going to be a bad thing at all. Uh, essentially my plot is to put the thing in position like this because most of the time when I'm driving forward it will be rotating that away and therefore this edge is less likely to scoop up debris and feed it inside to the vital tender little bits. Okay, so we have one end held in tension roughly, kind of. Haven't thought about it. I reckon I'm going to pull this bloody thing off entirely. Or maybe hold it out here, mount the patch, and then try and stretch this over the edge of the patch. Because putting it under there is just not working. Okay. We have the basic beginnings of the idea. And yeah, now we get real hillbilly. Repairing running gear with tie wire and pliers. There you go. Not hoopty doopty super neat. Not a hundred percent symmetrical, but I'm pretty sure the tie wire over the top of the duct tape, over the top of the gum boot, over the top of the ripped and torn CV joint boot, at the speeds I go and on the roads I travel on. That is going to work pretty much at least as good as that one will. And it's lost its little dummy boot ring. And yeah, see there's one of those little dummy rubber rings that I finished up. I'd, I did put it underneath me bandage repair. So, not perfect, but it's a shit pot better than nothing. Not that it really would have mattered, because one of the reasons I was convinced to buy the Subaru 1800 touring wagon was because some friends of mine who lived on a hippie commune told me that that place had had something like 22 of them. And they all continued to proceed. They never actually broke down and stopped. They made some horrible noises, and when you took them to the mechanic, the parts cost a lot of money, but they never actually broke down and stopped. So all I'm doing is stopping it from making the horrible noises. Hopefully, that will work. Well, we might as well see whether it's going to work. Well, it's an interesting prospect. But certainly in places like the Amazon. At least we go once around the driveway loop. And if it falls off in the first 75 yards, well, it was a morning wasted. If it doesn't fall off, well, it might just prolong the life of that particular constant velocity joint until the vehicle stops working for some other reason. And now, the moment of truth. Behold, Kimosabi. Behold, the repair remains in situ. Therefore, thus and because, the morning was not entirely wasted. I got something done. What I got done needed to be done. If I had driven that thing up to the other end of the property and then back, I could well have got some shit into that constant velocity joint, which would mean that it would be too late to do the job. So it had to be done now. So even though it wasn't exactly precisely what I planned on doing with me morning, I had a productive morning. I've already chopped a night's wood as well while waiting for the uh, gumboot calf to dry. And then, after I have my midday cup of coffee, looks like I left that on for just a little bit too long. I 
as you can guess, I am still attempting to rescue those bloody batteries. So far I've got them to the point where they'll uh, they'll be at 12.9 volts in the morning after a zero degree Celsius night. And after about half an hour of 0.8 of an amp drain, they'll be holding maybe 12.65 volts. So yeah, they're not dead. They're not making a, a Lazarus-like recovery either. But that's a different story for another day. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. It might only be providing half an amp at 12 volts. Don't know, I'd have to interrupt proceedings in order to figure it out because at the moment the, uh, the amp meter is connected between the panel and the battery, not between the battery and the inverter. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao. Arr, cappuccino.